Hello everyone, my name's John. I'm a retired cook from the northeast of England in the UK and welcome to my latest video. And in this one I'll be making these delicious but very easy to make corned beef and potato pasties. You can view the ingredients list and full written method for this recipe on the recipe page on the channel's website. I'll leave a link in the description under the video or you can click on the eye icon top right of the screen to take you directly to the recipe page. And I'll be doing the Patreon and PayPal shout out a little later in the video. OK, I'll start the recipe by preparing the baking tray. And the dimensions of the tray I'll be using are on screen. Now I'm going to line the tray with parchment paper for this recipe, but first as an extra precaution I'll give the tray a thin coat of lard or butter. This also stops the paper flapping about when the fan is running in the oven. And for belt and braces I'll grease the top of the paper too. OK, I'll start the recipe by making the pastry. I like to use my old food processor for this. It's quicker, easier and makes much better pastry because it keeps everything cold which is good for pastry. I'll start by adding the plain or all-purpose flour. And the next ingredient to go in is the salt. Time to add the fats, starting with the lard. If you can't get lard where you live, you can use any other fat like shortening or even use all butter if you have to. Next to go in is the butter. Once again, everything should be cold. And to demonstrate how quick and simple this is, I'm going to show this in real time. First, pulse your machine for a few seconds until it resembles fine breadcrumbs. Now that's step one out of the way and that only took 15 seconds. Next I'll set the machine away and slowly add the water. The amount of water is critical, so try to weigh your water in grams. It's much more accurate than relying on measuring jugs. Now let your processor run until the dough ball forms and starts running around the side of the bowl. And that's it done. 27 seconds, that's all it took, and you have a ball of perfect pastry. And if you haven't got a processor, you can make this pastry by hand. Check out my chicken pie video on how to do it that way. Now before you can use it, it needs to relax and cool off in the fridge for at least 30 minutes. You can make this pastry hours in advance. Out of this recipe I'll be making four pasties, so I'll divide it into four pieces. If your measurements were correct at the beginning, each of your pieces should be 155 grams, that's five and a half ounces each. Right, those can go into the fridge for now. OK, on to making the filling. So to a bowl add your mashed potato. It'll help mix better if your potato is slightly warm. Not hot, around body temperature would be great. Next to go in is the corned beef. Here in the UK we used canned corned beef. But if you have a piece of uncanned or home cooked corned beef, shred it up really fine with a sharp knife. Now add that to the bowl, followed by the finely chopped small onion. Time to add your seasoning. Now the corned beef I'm using is pretty salty, so I'm only adding a few shakes of white pepper. It's the white pepper that gives these pasties that great northeast of England flavour. And if you want to make them meatier, you can add a bit more corned beef and a bit less potato, but you do need a good balance of them both. Right, I'll give that a good mix until it's all combined and then I'll get it into the fridge to chill for a while. It'll be easier to manage once it stiffens up a bit. OK, my pastry's been in the fridge for the last hour, so it should be ideal for rolling. Mm. 
when rolling pastry, try to roll in one direction and turn the pastry 90 degrees. That should keep it reasonably round. Once it's about 3mm thick, get yourself something round to cut your circles out. I'm using this 18cm, that's 7 inch ball, to make mine. Now all you've got to do is cut round the edge of the ball. And this is another great use for the door scraper. These should be back in stock very soon on the website. And as you can see this pastry is about 4mm thick. Try not to roll them out too thin otherwise they will crack in the oven. Right, I've already divided the filling into four portions and as you can see it's a bit more manageable once it's chilled for a while. Place one of the fillings on the pastry as shown and shape it so it's a sort of half circle. Now brush egg wash all around the edge of the pasty and simply fold it over. And all you have to do now is crimp the edges of the pasty as shown. If you're not comfortable doing this with your fingers, you can always use the tongs of a fork and just press all the way around the edge. And that would make quite a cool pattern as well. Now I'll get that one onto the prepared baking tray and I'll see you in a flash once I've made the other three. Before going any further, preheat your oven to 160 degrees Celsius, that's 320 Fahrenheit, or gas mark 3. Right, we're getting closer. All we've got to do now, before they go into the oven, is give them a good coat of egg wash. Once the egg wash is on, give each pasty two or three vent holes and now they're ready to go into the preheated oven. Once in, set your timer for 40 minutes. I like to bake these low and slow. If you crank up the heat on these pasties, the filling tends to burst out through the pastry. It's not the end of the world if that happens, but you want them aesthetically pleasing as well as delicious. And while those are baking, I hope you don't mind if I give my very first recipe book a bit of a plug. The book has lots of our favourite recipes from our work kitchens in it and is available in the channel's website shop along with loads of other equipment I use in the videos. It's just another way you can support the channel. I leave a link in the description box below the video or just click on the eye icon top right of your screen if you want to order a copy today. OK, once the time's up, get them out of the oven and place the tray on a wire rack. And they are looking great. Now let them sit there for five minutes before carefully lifting them off the tray and back onto the rack. Right, so far so good. I'll give them a few more minutes to cool off and then I'll be back for a taste very shortly. Right, it's been 20 minutes and I honestly can't wait any longer. 
The filling has filled the inside perfectly and the smell of that peppery filling is absolutely gorgeous. The pastry is crisp and that gorgeous shiny golden brown colour is very appetising. They look absolutely fantastic. And oh yes, they are truly delicious and so simple to make and I really do hope you give them a try. You won't be sorry and I guarantee you'll give them a thumbs up too. And as promised at the beginning, here is the latest list of my Patreon and PayPal donators. And they are Tina Charest, Anastasia Vizhnevska, Michael Dumetz, Randy Roush, Andrea Simpson, Douglas Worrell, Keith Hickson, Paul Dunn, Farid Bala, Sally Melbourne, Graham Johnson, Alan Turner, Marshall Banks, Gia Chen, Terry Lemley, John Cloisterman, Linda and Eric Renshaw, Joe Burry, Heather White, Chris Pearson, Colette Fournier, Tatana, Robin Collily, Mo S, Kathy Dovenspike, Sarah J. Wood, Kate Bartolome, Sue Marshall Morton, Lisa Henderson, Nick Mullock, Lisa Neville, Jen Harrison, Vifer Garcia, Ian Rossiter, Nils Heinz, Matthew Schechter, Sally Webster, Nigel Monnelly, Neil Moore, Alan Reynolds, Mark Morpen, David Hopper, Keith Bloodworth, Griffin, Mike Peake, Pam Corker, Claire Simpson, Forzane and Montira Warren. And thanks again guys, I really do appreciate all your support. Well thank you again for watching, please like, share, comment and subscribe by hitting the circle above. If you do subscribe, activate the bell icon next to the subscribe button on my channel page. And by doing that, you'll be automatically notified every time I upload a new video. And in the meantime, here's a few of my other videos and playlists that you may want to watch. So, until the next time, be safe in the kitchen and bye for now.